know the lake you are camped on must be pretty big when you share the bay with a big ship like this. This is the 290 gross ton research vessel Kiyi. After all, this is Lake Superior, the world's largest freshwater lake. And lucky for us, it's a calm morning here on this vast inland sea. Brad and I are up early this morning, preparing our breakfast and breaking camp in time to take advantage of the favorable weather conditions. This is day two of our three-day coastal paddle along the magnificent shoreline here in Lake Superior Provincial Park. And we've just put in at Gargantua Harbor. We actually spent a night out here and watched a gorgeous sunset and there was a nice big ship anchored out there. But today we're gonna try to push our way down the coast. Now, it's Saturday and Sunday is calling for some inclement weather, up to five foot swells. So there's a good possibility that day might be a windbound day. Uh, so today we really wanna put a lot of kilometers behind us. It's about 7.45 right now. We're gonna push off and maybe try to get anywhere from 30 to 40 kilometers under our belt today. So we'll see how it goes and hopefully the lake and the waves are cooperative today. We made good progress that morning. Thankful that this big lake was showing us her gentle side. How's this for Lake Superior? It's gorgeous. Some nice, really, really, really gentle rollers pushing us along, but other than that, no wind at all, and this is perfect paddling. Using lightweight carbon fiber bent shaft paddles, it took little effort to push our Novacraft Prospector canoe through these calm waters. allowing us plenty of time to stop and explore the amazing landscape. The water here is so incredibly crystal clear. You can almost imagine yourself paddling along the shoreline of some distant tropical lagoon. But the reality is, this is not warm seawater, and there is no living coral reef to be found below the surface. Instead, the clear, icy cold fresh water reveals only a desolate lake bottom littered with rocks. Around every point of land, there appears a new beach waiting to be discovered. This rocky one, more than a kilometer in length, made for a perfect lunch stop. Further down the coast, we pulled ashore at this isolated sandy beach. That's uh, it's just so 3k down. Standing here under the hot July sun, 
and looking out at the lush green hills and the aquamarine water, I could easily imagine myself in a place like Jamaica or St. Lucia, not Northern Ontario. So a good thing to have uh, when you're out here is a little weather radio. This little guy doesn't need batteries. You can just crank it up here, charge up the internal battery. This one also has a little solar cell. Increasing cloudiness, 60% chance of showers in the afternoon with risk of a thunderstorm. Wind becoming south 20 kilometers per hour in the afternoon, high 25. So that weather forecast put a damper on things. Knowing that tomorrow might be rougher, we pushed on in search of a suitable campsite and found an ideal sheltered location here at Robertson Cove. This has to be one of the prettiest campsites I've ever stayed at. We set up camp, hiked a bit of the coastal trail, and enjoyed an amazing sunset. Sunday morning, we awoke to the sound of wind and the sight of rougher seas. This was a big contrast to Saturday's idyllic conditions. We knew we had to get on the water early to avoid the higher seas and expected rainfall. The plan was to paddle about 14 kilometers to Sinclair Cove, where one of our vehicles was parked. Oh, another big one. Holy crap. But as we pushed on, the wave troughs intensified. We had put nearly four kilometers behind us. We were feeling strong. We were making good time and we hadn't taken on any water, but we had no way of knowing what the next 10 kilometers would bring our way. We also knew that we were at a point where Highway 17, the road which parallels the coast, veers inland, effectively cutting off a potential escape route. And so the decision was made to land at Sand River, where we knew the highway crossed the river. After tacking out into the open lake, we made our turn towards the beach. And then, with the full force of the wind and the waves at our tail, we surged forward and paddled like mad to keep ourselves upright until at last we made landfall. Once on solid ground, Brad, who is an athlete used to running long distances, grabbed the car keys and headed off to retrieve our vehicle. As I waited with the canoe on that windswept beach, I watched the surf crash in and wondered how difficult that last 10 kilometers might have been. I think it would have been doable, but when it comes to the big lake they call Gitche Gumi, it's better to be safe than sorry. <laughs> <laughs> 